My name is Earl Willis Jr. Today is March the 21st, 2018, and today I am with Dennis Roberts, and we're uh, in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, Mr. Roberts, uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, November 9th, 1949. 1949, okay. Uh, did you have any uh, parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, anybody in the military? Uh, my father was in the military during World War II. Okay. And myself. What what branch was he in? He was in the Army. Army? And he's, he was in like um, Luzerne, the Philippines. Okay. So he's, he was around pretty much too. Okay. So he, did he ever talk about that much? Or he's... No, they really didn't because there really wasn't much to talk about that other people would understand. Yeah. And they were quite horrifying things that they saw and went through. So I'm assuming he, could, he was drafted, correct? Yes, he was drafted. Okay. Did, did, so uh, did you ever think about the military or anything when you were growing up? Or a child? Oh, growing up, uh, I thought of the, the U.S. Navy. Uh, okay. It was my thing. That I had an uncle that was in the Navy. Oh, he had an uncle too. I had an uncle, he was in the U.S. Navy. He was on board a destroyer. Okay. And uh, we, he was, this was in the 50s, 1950s, he was uh, in there. And I just, if I had a choice, if I had to go into the military, I was going to go in in the Navy. Okay. Okay. So you think maybe that played a little Maybe some part of it played a lot in my f future decisions. Okay, okay. Uh, what will you do before you enter the service? I was in college, uh, getting into law enforcement, police administration, and I was also working as a store detective for a department store in Baltimore, okay. Maryland. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what, what, what kind of stuff were you doing? Uh, you, you said. Uh, did you work for like a uh, the police force? Like a it was uh, it was a it was a department store. I was uh, specially special assigned um, for picking dealing with shoplifters, things that go on, uh, okay. store protection. The, the um, I'll think of it in a second here. A lot of it was with the store losing money from the clothing being damaged, missing. Things of that stolen. nature, and he had stolen, and employees were okay. Did you enjoy doing that? To an extent. Okay. Uh, what year is what year is that? That was from approximately 1969, and throughout the 1970s, that was kind of inter not interrupted, but I had military duty service. Okay. In that time frame. Okay, so you this is this Baltimore. But I'm uh, from Baltimore. Okay, so this is this is we, we this is a what pretty big department store. It was, you know? it was the Hoshul Cone department stores. There were probably 13 stores throughout the state, and we had, we had to travel to different stores. Oh, so the you state. just didn't spam in one place. spot, correct? Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so is this after you got out of the uh, after the high school? This is after high school and in the college. Uh, I worked. I worked for the department store as a salesperson in the men's and boys department, okay. and I saw this other thing. I said, "Hey, that's interesting." So, so uh, where did you go to college at? Uh, I was Catonsville Community College in okay. Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Did you go? How long? How many years? It was, I was actually. It's a two years college, okay. but I was there for three. Okay. I changed curriculums from electronics technology. Okay. Is that like an associate's degree? It's an associate's degree. Okay. Program. Okay. That's good. Uh, so, in what branch of the military did you serve? I served in the uh, U.S. Navy. Okay, okay. Uh, did you, were you enlisted or you were drafted? I was to be drafted into the Army and I had a decision I could make and I went down to Fort McHenry, Maryland Reserve Center and I joined the Reserves at that point. Okay, so before you were uh, drafted, drafted. It, Right. You uh, joined. You joined the uh, Navy. Navy and, and reserve was, unit. Okay. So you. What was the, your decision behind that? I didn't. I did start to go into the Army Reserve, and I just didn't like it. Okay. It was just standing too much standing around. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it was. I had a choice. It was my choice. Okay. Uh, bef bef uh, before we get started, you're talking about the Navy. And this is probably the first time that we've had something like this. You brought something that's kind of interesting. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Can you, you tell us about your? This, this is I, uh, this is the sounds uh, on board ship, and the uh, 
the Great Escape Company allowed me to borrow a record player in Bowling Green, Kentucky to be able to play this little record that was produced for the ship company in 1973. Uh, these were sounds on board the ship of what ship life was really like, and you could hear it. So yeah. I'd like to play that for yeah, you now yeah, if I could. Ahead. Yeah, that'd be okay. good. Give me a second. We got this thing coming on, I hope.
I remember that's 45 years old too. Yeah. And um, when they had mail call, there's something, this being the USS John F. Kennedy, they would play Sweet Caroline over the PA system because that was that was the name of the mail con coming back on board. Okay. And that was a, a trip for everybody, yeah. really. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank I, you. Yeah, I really I like that. Guys, you know, thinking about my dad too. Oh yeah, the the, the memories with that just now, just really? it being on board the ship is just like we're sitting right here. Cause that's how big it is. You don't get a lot of rocking and rolling of the ship. Uh, but when you do hit North Atlantic and you hit storms, you know it. Yeah. <laughs> you know it. So. so I appreciate you sharing that with me. Oh, thank you for letting me. So where did you go to your, your basic training? Uh, you Great Lakes, Great Lake? Illinois, okay. yes. Okay, what time of year was it? Uh, October through okay. December. Okay, yeah, because my father was there in the winter and it was horrible. This cold. We cold. were fairly lucky. It was cold, yes. So a lot of snow? We missed out on a lot of the snow, except for when I went to um, machinist mate school. The day of uh, graduation was, in, was actually April the 7th, and this could be coming up. We went in the graduation, it was 70 degrees. We came out two hours later, and it was eight inches of snow <laughs> on the ground, still coming down. It was one of the few times they closed Chicago Airport. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it can still happen this year. Yeah. Uh, of course, they're, they're up uh, like in Chicago and Philadelphia right now. They're having the Nor'easter, aren't they? Yes, and a lot of that is the uh, Lake Effect snow. Lake Effect snow. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. What was? Do you remember being? Uh, do you remember being uh, sworn in, raising your right hand and being sworn at, in? At, at uh, Fort McHenry. Yes. Okay. That, that's, that was the. Um, How did you get to Great Lakes? Ride a bus. Oh, they flew us airplane. Yeah, okay. it was it was the days when you flew, and if there wasn't a place for you to land, you flew around for forty five minutes in the air to get rid of fuel. Oh. It's not that it's going to another airport that time. It's burning off. Right? Able to burn the fuel <laughs> off before you land. That's kind of yes. wasteful, right? It's very much so. Very much. So. Okay. Uh, what was some of your well, the, what was the family, What does your your mother and father think about you joining them? Yeah. Of course, my mother didn't want me to go, and I really didn't want to go either. It was the first time being away from home. Uh, my dad was he was quiet. He was proud but quiet, and yeah, yeah. typical parents losing their son for a while. Yeah, and I have an older brother that uh, he was fortunate enough where he was able to get student deferments. Okay, and he wasn't. Didn't have to serve. Okay, he would have been through the the Bay of Pigs in '62, okay. which is in Cuba. Cuba, yes. Uh, what was some of your first uh, things you remember in, in Great Lakes at your, your your training? It's your basic training uh, of how actually how smart our group of men were. Our company, it was Company 371. We, we had S flags that you would learn by going to class and just picking up how taking tests we had like nine S flags from our unit we were top in our unit we were a lot of school graduates uh, uh, sorry not high school but uh, college graduates that were there and the guys been four years two years and, and then there was a really a diverse group of men yeah uh, was there some of your instructors that stood out more than others? Well, the, the, the instructor happened to be uh, a uh, chief petty officer uh, named Iyer. And uh, in fact, we actually met him back out in the fleet. Uh, my company commander was actually on the fleet on board the same ship I was okay. on after I had been there for a while. Uh, the, the, the men were like uh, second class, first class uh, petty officers uh, that we had to look up to that ran the company okay. at that particular point. Okay. Uh, were all housed in one particular area, bunk was beds. There, was any of them stood out more than others? Some of you, you, that, that did anything that you remember or you? Oh, I remember a lot of the guys. Uh, a lot of guys were pretty good clowns. The entertainers of the group, yeah. some were not so good, but that's part of it. 
Yeah. I mean, you liked people, and some people you didn't. The guy we liked the most was our uh, our leader of our of our company, and he wound up being sick, so he never actually graduated with us. He came down with some kind of other illness that really put him off his feet. Oh, okay. At that time. So you uh, you would, how long did you, was it? Like six weeks? It was 15 weeks six weeks in, in boot camp. Okay. Well, we, towards the 15, end 14, 15 weeks, we were allowed to go to like the PX and get uh, what they called, they called beer, but it was 5% uh, alcohol. Okay. It was near beer. Okay. So you could unwind a little bit. Okay. Uh, so after your, your, uh, your basic training, what was your MOS? You said your MOS was? Uh, machinist made uh, school. Okay, where did you go? Where did you go there? The Great Lakes, Great Lakes as well. Same yes. place. Yes. Yeah, it was Camp Porter, and I cannot remember the name of the. So uh, what would be like a basic? What would be like your average day when you went to the, your uh, your special training? I was uh, I was called a, sn a night steamer. Uh, we uh, we learned that the how to, how to run this this steam part of the ship okay. with the engine room. Uh, you would go there in the middle of the night. You guy your other buddies were home. Back at the barracks, sleeping, and you're there running the ship basically at night, steam, learning the valves, the engines, okay. things of that nature. So it was kind of on job training. It was yes, it was definitely on job. Was it training. in classroom work? It was in. It was in. The, it was in. There was classroom work, and then you go out and apply it uh, to what you what you learn in the classroom. Did basically. you Did you enjoy doing that? Yes. 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 Uh, okay. It was. It was interesting work. Was it kind of some, somewhat mechanical, or oh, it was basically mechanical. I mean, you learned about steam uh, and the effects of steam can have on a person. Uh, like if you have a steam leak, okay, you don't want to go anywhere near that because it will burn you through and through. You can actually put a piece of wood on fire with su superheated steam. Yeah, people wouldn't realize. Right, that. right. And the jerseys that you were wearing, you had to get get them. They were flame proof but if you got near the steam you would your body would be blistered yeah people think about steam as like a little team a little tea mm -hmm. kettle when it's under pressure yeah. it's a lot different yeah so you you uh, did you have did you enjoy mechanical things or that's the first thing yeah, actually yes i had i enjoyed mechanical things and it actually led me on to my later uh after the military uh, i was actually classified as a marine mechanic that could get into engineering type work like of that nature and I wound up doing engineering work after I came out of the service. Okay, okay. So uh, after you graduated from your uh, your your MOS, your, your basic training, your MOS uh, school, where did you go? Where was your station? That, that I was stationed back at Fort McHenry, Maryland Reserve Center waiting orders to go into the fleet which is different than being on base with training and your school. So you were going in, it's more like you you were in, you were in school or college, then you were going into the job. From place. my, right, my, or they call it a billet. They had a billet for machinist mate, and I was assigned to the USS John F. Kennedy. Okay, was it, did you did you get to pick that or were you assigned that? I was assigned that. Okay. You could, I could have wound up anywhere in the world. Did, so you, we were talking a little about, can you tell us the, the what was unique about the John F. Kennedy? It was like almost a brand new. Uh, it, it was the newest and the last of the steam-driven uh, ships in okay. the Navy. I mean, and it was big. It was over a thousand uh, fifty-two foot long flush deck. Okay, so it was a thousand how many how many feet? A thousand fifty-two. Okay. I'm I'm trying to do my math. How many football fields? Well, I, can, I I could probably look that up for you for a football field, or I have the statistics on on a okay. cruise ship book that they made for us. Okay. And I got I could probably look it up here. The length, the flight deck was a thousand fifty-one foot three inches. Sorry, um, the length overall length was a thousand seventy-two foot. Length and um, they don't have it broken down into the football fields, but you could there are like three football fields, including the end zones. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you so people think about a little bit of tugboat going through the water. This is not that. No, no. This this is not that. It's like a it's like a floating city, right? It is a floating city. Yes. Uh, we're dealing with the the total approximate total of men are fifty two hundred men, five thousand two hundred men. 
approximately 2,600 men were ship's company that ran the ship, and the, and the air wing that came on board was an accompanied another 2,600 men approximately with their planes because, and all their support. Because those little 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 towns and little communities around here that don't have five thousand. Don't have five thousand. Don't people. have five thousand. And these were people from all over the United States. So you got yeah. Me being from the East Coast, people from the West Coast were here too. Why they they can't they even transfer people from one end to the other? Okay. Uh, different stations. I uh, have friends. I some. Friends I stood out who were from Colorado, uh, a fellow named Danny Johnson, okay. and nicknamed Boone. So I hope he hears this somewhere and, uh, yeah. and brings back memories. Did you have, everybody have nicknames? Yeah, you had some nicknames, some good ones, not some, yeah. some not so good ones, uh, and that. But yeah, yeah, it, it was a real diverse group of okay. people. So uh, where was one of the first places that John F. Kennedy went? Well, I I caught up to it. First, I flew over to Rota, Spain, okay. where I spent some detail there for like two weeks you know, to get your overseas shots and make sure you weren't carrying anything and any disease to go over where the Kennedy was located in the Mediterranean, uh, near Palma, Spain. Okay, so uh, I always ask, <coughs> I like to ask people, what was like your average, your average day? Well, like, what time did you wake up? What time did you go to bed? What were some of the things you've done? Oh, on board ship, you're yeah. asking. Well, okay. Well, the the ship. If you see movies, for one thing, you're going to hear noises like uh, uh, reveille and things like that. They didn't do that on board the ship because there was such a different group of people. You got up at all hours of the day or night. There were. People did different things. There was movement going on all 24 hours of the day. A uh, typical day would be you would get up out of your rack. Somebody would come wake you up, possibly, or you had to you had duty. You had to be on watch somewhere. Uh, you could get your food. There were two. It was a forward galley and a aft galley to get food. You could get meal three times a day if you needed to. Okay. Mid rats and all that. Did you eat, you, eat, you ate pretty well the ship? Yeah. Yes, because there wasn't much else to do. Yeah. Uh, there were there when they had uh, steak night, things like that, yeah. Yeah. That was good. I mean the food was good. A so, lot of it. Uh, so can you when you can you explain maybe to the people that they maybe don't understand, when you say you were on watch that didn't mean you got there the last minute or you came in late. You, you were there. Oh, uh, you were there. In fact, you were woken up a half hour before your watch and you need to report within that time frame. So watch, meaning our uh, assignment was we had the forward uh, machinery room where our air conditioning chill water units were located and you had to be there for your four hours or however long and you stay there. Or you went to the mid ship and had your watch did the same thing or you went to the aft section wherever you one of those three places you was your assigned workspace uh, or you were working in the um, roving watches where you had they had trouble calls for oh my it's too hot in a particular area of the ship or it's too cold and you had to go there to see what was wrong with the air conditioning unit was it blocked from dust uh, was the steam not getting there? Because people were counting on you, right? Oh yes, uh, the the main guy that was counting on us, we had to wear, you had to wear your best uniform, your best utility uniform to go check the captain's temperature. The guy had the shiniest shoes, got to go do that, and he actually wanted to go to his cabin to do it because the captain's um, crew that were around him were Filipinos not to pick on them, but they were his cooks, and you got to sample some of the real good food. Okay. <laughs> so that was that was one of the benefits of being uh, going to the captain's cabin. Uh, so uh, I think the point I've made almost only over the last year is that whenever I've had an interview, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people I've interviewed are, le are, are, all, are always on time or probably 30 minutes early like yourself. You yeah, you don't want to be late. No. That that's and, especially and, missing a ship. And then sometimes mm -hmm. there's a military saying I think it's if, if you're on time you're late. Yes. 
you got to be there before you're supposed to yeah. be there. You know, you don't just drag in the last minute. No. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's, and to this, yeah, to this yeah. day, I'm like 20 minutes late, 20 minutes early at the work. So I've been, I've been, I've been had that. It's something that's to beat me. into you, yeah. whether you understand it or not, you will do that. Yeah. So, uh, you were saying that you started your day and you were working in the... Uh, in a forward machinery space. Okay. Where we had air conditioned, 275 ton chill water units and make sure you had check the temperatures that the, that that was running properly the chill water was going through it uh, and sometimes you, it, it got too warm you could tell you could almost tell the location of where you were crossing the atlantic out of norfolk virginia because you had nine sorry you had six units running through through the course of the the day when you get you might have four when you're leaving port or even three. As soon as you get about 12 miles off the coast of Norfolk, you begin to pick up the Gulf Stream while well, that water is warmer. And your chill water is going to need, you're going to have to put more units on the line because your ship's okay. getting warmer. Okay. And then once you get out of that, you can relax and go back to maybe two or three units instead of having all six running. Yes. Ship at that time. So you said you knew. And when you went to the North Atlantic, which we did, uh, above the Arctic Circle, you almost didn't have to have any chill. Oh, <laughs> it's that, that cold? It, was, it was that cold of the water up there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, what? Well, so, so we, how long a uh, work day was you? Like a ten-hour day, eight hours? No, you, you still had eight hours, but you were on call twenty-four. And that was like, if I, as you remember, playing on the, the recording there, you heard general quarters. You were on a call for that general quarters. You had to be at some place. When they yelled that, you had to be at some particular place of your your assigned duty, whether it be on the end of a fire hose, waiting for something to occur, such as a broken arrow, which meant a, a bomb had fallen and exploded on deck somewhere. Yeah, you had, you had to take care of that. Um, things of that nature. Okay, so you were on an aircraft carrier, were you? Yes, I was. Well, was I was, okay. yeah, the, John F. Kennedy oh, was, was the aircraft carrier. carrier CPA. Okay. It was an attack carrier. Uh, do you, what was, do you remember of any of the, like the, uh, the jets on, on, on the flight deck? Do you remember those or take it off or? Yes, the, the, the jets, I, ha I have, they have, I have some photos of some of the information from them, or at least I did here. I can't find them that fast. Maybe. Uh, yes, they, they would do demonstrations of uh, the jet. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. Can you, can you, yeah. you show the people? What? It is, uh, this is uh, this is the F-14, and uh, they would definitely show us. They have a demonstration on board ship. When, if you remember on the recording, it said "Stand by for the sonic boom." Boom. Well. You would be on the, it would demonstrate that we'd have a fly, called a flyby. You'd be standing there and you see this jet. All you would see would be the jet. No noise. Then the noise would be. A couple seconds later, your skin is going, you're going boom, and your skin is flapping on your bones because of the, uh, the sonic boom. It, it flies faster than the speed of sound. Yeah, break, yeah break it, it was breaking the sound barrier. Breaking the sound barrier. Because there it is and there's the sound. And, yes. And yeah. you can see the, Air swishing behind it, and yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's something you see every day. No, it? no. One of the other biggest things I never, I, you don't see every day is when we were in the uh, North Atlantic and uh, for NATO cruise, and we were having Russian bombers fly over us. And with this jet that I just showed you, it looked like a hawk. Next, in our our Navy ship, and we know how big they were in the Navy planes. Looked like a little sparrow following this big hawk. That's how big this Russian jets were. Right. I mean, bombs. Were they did, were they there because you were there? It was a NATO practice. Yes, they were just doing their normal routine of military on military, flying around and seeing what was going on. So they were letting you know they were there. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So what year is this? This was in '72 through '74. I was on board the okay. ship. On board okay. the ship. So they were just kind of saying, "I'm here." And yeah, we're here. And they always still do it. Yeah, that's <laughs> like it's on the news today. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, can you tell us what it, did you when you when you were sleeping? Was it loud on the, on the flight deck or? Well, we were we were 
the, the, the sleeping quarters are, are below. Some of them were up near, near a flight deck, but most of them were like on the, like the, the main uh, hangar deck or below for, for the sleeping quarters. Now, uh, but the air wing, they did have most of theirs above the uh, hangar deck, and they were near the flight deck, and it was noisy because you would hear the planes landing, you would hear the pistons of the, uh, the cable grabbing the cable, coming back to its normal position after the plane would land, yeah. uh, things of that nature. You just so, get used to it, right? You, you get accustomed to it, uh, and you do lose some of your hearing. Uh, that is a, a give me. It will yeah. happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you are used to a big city right? in Baltimore, right? Baltimore's a big city, but this, is a, this was a close city with a lot more diverse group of people, of men, people that you got, could get along with, and some you couldn't. It wasn't their fault. It's just that they were different people, and you were accustomed to different things. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see some of the guys that I have met and knew on board ships and even in boot camp. I would love to be able to see them now. In fact, I have one particular person, person that I was on board ship with, um, he, who is now my brother-in-law. Okay. We, uh, we actually were in Norfolk, Virginia, actually Virginia Beach, and we argued about me marrying his sister. We argued to the point where we actually streaked through Virginia Beach down the road arguing that I'm going to marry your sister. That was the day of Ray, of, uh, uh, Ray Stevens and his song, The Streak, had yeah. come out. So we were streaking, arguing, going down the street, and I won. So I married his sister, been happily married for 44 years. Okay. And that's what brings me actually here to Bowling Green, Kentucky okay. at this time. So uh, everybody usually, they just might have disagreements, but nobody, it didn't come to blows or fights. Yes, there were fights. Fights, okay. Uh, I, I even wound, wound up in the brig myself. If you didn't wind up in the brig, something was wrong with you. Let's just put it, just because if your ten, the tension got to everybody at one point or another, uh, there were, when you were on board ship, it was one thing, it was very tense. And your, and your mood and your, uh, your voice and your actions showed it. But when you were off away from the ship, you were relaxed. And you were a com almost a complete different, different person. Yeah. And that's why we have ports of call uh, in Spain, France, Italy, Greece, it, Turkey. Uh, yeah. That was very good with that. Uh, so, you, can you tell us about some of your friends? I mean, your friends. You did, did you have? Did you uh, have any close friends? Or yeah, you had, you actually become uh, friends. I, I was actually amazed when I first went on board the ship of how many friends that I knew from high school were actually assigned to the same ship. Okay. There were maybe a year behind me, or even a, not at that time, but a year after me. I mean, before me, uh, yeah, uh, you, you become friends with people, um, and you learn a lot from people as well. Yeah. Uh, now that, I know there was one, one gentleman that was trying to show us how to, when we go off the ship, to take our shirt and fold it under yeah, to make it that way. And, like the, uh, yeah, or actually to make it straight across, because so, yeah. you had a bag, you didn't want you to be bagging. And that, that stuck in my mind. I never, never thought about doing it. I just wanted to go off and hit, hit the nearest bar. Yeah. Um, that was what you, is what you did. Uh, so, uh, was any, did you have any stories that stick out in your mind that you, that you like to talk about? Or you? Uh, there, I, there are so many things that I have actually done. One I, ha I have is when we went to can you, can on the show, NATO cruise, can you explain what you yeah, on NATO cruise, you look, similar to going across the equator, you become a shellback. Going across the Arctic Circle, you become a blue nose. For the first time going over, you actually get a uh, a poster. This happens to be my wallet size one that I blew up. It gives you the date and talks about the realm of the Arctic Circle. Uh, Neptune, and it gives you the date and the that you Kennedy went across, and the 
longitude and latitude that you went across. So that, that's, that paper, is it almost 50 years old? This is 45 years old. Okay. I've had it in my wallet a lot and I just blew it up trying to keep it. Okay. They gave me one, I couldn't find the other one that I have at home, which is bigger. Okay. Um, we were also we were in Edinburgh, Scotland, which was nice to see. We went up the English Channel, saw the White Cliffs of Dover and the Normandy Shore, which were a lot of memories from a lot of people yeah, from past about, stories. How about to go to Normandy? Did you go to like, No, we didn't go to Normandy, but went to Edinburgh, Scotland okay. as a port of call. Okay. Uh, but still was able to be able to see on one side of the ship seeing the White Cliffs of Dover and the Normandy Shore on yeah. the clear day. Uh, being in the Mediterranean, you sometimes you would see, you could look out the side of the ship through the hangar uh, elevators and you could see it was smooth as glass. That's how calm the water could be. You could see the dolphins. Oh, really? Out of water. Yeah, that was some of the, the, the prettiest. Do you, uh, do you ever remember any, like, any, were you having any hurricanes or anything? The, the storms we usually outran because the radar system, they didn't want us to be knocked around. We, I remember once, one time when we actually had some forward and aft movement of the ship. Normally you had none of that. And everything on board ship had to be tied down at that point because we were called missiles. I mean, uh, uh, a bolt somewhere if they come across and it hits you in the head yeah. and, and you're, you're knocked out. People wouldn't know it for a yeah. while until they came down to... Uh, so if you can avoid a storm, you did it. Yes, exactly, exactly. Now our smaller ships, our destroyers that were around us, they had to outrun it. Because they, they would be, they had a head for port. We, we usually stayed out because uh, we'd be a bigger ship than that. So. Okay. Uh, what about at night? Did you ever see like the, how old are the stars in the, the ocean? The, the stars are a lot different than they are on day, on, day, on land. That different, I mean, they're much clearer. And you see the curvature. If you go up on the bridge, sometimes you had a chance to, you could see the curvature of the earth. Really? Which was nice. That beautiful to, to see that kind was of it, stuff. Uh, do you, how, how you say it was different than on land? Can you explain that to people who moved on? Well, the, the, uh, the moon is the, okay, you have the steady lights that you see on land. Yeah. Okay, and it, which distracts your vision. But it, on the ocean, there are no steady lights. Yeah. Okay, and it's just clear. Is it kind of like in the country? Is it kind of like living in the country? It's like, uh, yeah, example, example, right. You're like living in the country, like in the Alberton area, as one Warren County area. And I think you, you look around and you see, wow, bright stars, like a harvest moon. You could almost reach out and touch it. That, that's how clear uh, things are and how big they actually appear. Do the water looks, uh, I've heard people say like sometimes where you are at, that the water looks clearer or darker? Or it depends on, on, on the shallowness or the clarity of the water is, is a lot different. Talking about the nighttime, one of the good experiences, I was, sometimes I was able to go to the aft end of the ship and look at the water. Now the phosphorus in the water churning of the props will make that light up. It's like a green glow behind the ship. Yeah. Now a lot the problem with that is your enemy can actually pick that up okay. and say, oh, there's a big ship there. Kind of gives your positions away. Positions away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but still, it's still pretty to look at. Do you, do you ever remember, uh, we were talking about some of the safety concerns on board the ship. Do you ever remember any accidents or was there any, uh, you know, because you've got... Jets. Some of the men, so there, were, there were several uh, pilots that were injured. One pilot somehow his ejector seat uh, went off when he's in the hangar bay, and he got splattered inside his cockpit. Something happened there. There were rumors that possibly somebody tampered with it. Um, the pilots are number one men to begin with, and you're as a pilot you're depending on your crew is taking care of yeah. the plane. And sometimes there were incidences, bad incidences, where it's, and I guess there are sea stories, that pilots, they had a chance to go over it. And if they didn't bring certain things back for the men, this is how things got back on board ship that weren't supposed to be there, such as drugs, marijuana, uh, 
they were injured in that reason. That, that wasn't a good so, thing to happen. So this guy lost his life? Lost his life for someone that was, wasn't a straight shooter to begin with for a person on board ship that wanted something different. This is the bad parts of life. That's why we have the, uh, the crew of police, kind of a police department. That's him. Uh, it, there, there were uh, master at arms. Oh boy, here. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. And uh, it was, it was. Um, can, can you had, can well, you had, you had to. Uh, you were assigned to this at times. Plus the dog, he was our biggest. Well, not our biggest fear, but he went down in areas where men couldn't find things, and they wound up. Uh, did he, did, was he, he, did he find things? He, he would find, he would sniff out drugs that normally the, the regular men couldn't find and that stuff. And it wasn't fun to be in their position because everybody hated you. Yeah, um, you were just, just trying to do your right. job. Right. Exactly, exactly. Just like a regular police officer. you got to have some control. Yeah. Uh, it, it is a city. It has all the problems of a big city. Uh, I guess I'm kind of thankful that this particular time frame that we didn't have women on board in the military on board ships at this time, because I guarantee you that's a whole new set of issues. Yeah. Set of issues. So. Yeah. So how how long were you in the Navy? Six, six years? Uh, you, you sign up for six years whether you're in the reserves okay. or you sign to join any military service. So when you uh, when you were leaving, were you sad to leave the, the Navy or ready to... I was sad. To, I, went, I, I left the ship uh, in 74, and yeah, you had some fellows that helped you. You missed everybody. You, you really you really did. Whether well, they were good or bad, I wonder what so-and-so is doing these days. Um, and even when you, you, you had to get back to adjust back to civilian life, which was hard at times. Was it hard, hard for you? or It, it was hard. It, it's hard for everybody. If, if you have to think about it, it it's hard. Um, because you miss the, miss the guys, the camaraderie that goes along. Um, especially, like, like, like I have, let me show you a picture of, of my group, if I may. Yeah. Um, this is my engineering group here. Okay. And you were allowed to have beards, oh, that's myself, and next to me is actually my now brother-in-law, Charles Johnson, I'll mention his name, I don't know if he warned me to or not, but he, he actually stayed in for about 16 years. Oh, really? For himself, yes, yes. Um, guys are from New York, uh, all, over, all over the country. So you, so it was, you kind of had a time getting uh, adapted back to your civilian life? Yeah, yes. Um, because you didn't have to get up. I mean, you, what the, some of the things were when you got woken up by mistake because you were up ready, fighting ready to do something. I mean, if, if you, were, if you had been sleeping and somebody came to wake you up, you don't wake a person up that's been feeding because you've never been sleeping because you never know what they've been thinking of before that. You I mean, you're up ready to fight, get into some movement. It took a long time to be able to relax yeah. from that and get back into your routine. Uh, driving a car, you didn't drive too much there either. No. Almost we learned how to drive a car. What about people talking about you having sea legs or whatever? You, well, yeah, you, you do develop sea legs when you're, when you're on board a ship uh, and coming back on solid land. That, that becomes a, an issue at times. Okay. The Coming from a ship that size, the aircraft carrier, uh, when I went back to Fort McHenry, Maryland Reserve Center, we had a, a destroyer that we were uh, part of a, a unit called Ship Maintenance and Repair 1006. And we would go on board the destroyer and do different maintenance for the ship. The problem was you're going from a real big hatchway to about a 28 inch scuttle you have to go down. If you're claustrophobic, Claustrophobic, you don't want to be. No, no. That becomes uh, an issue at that point. But you become accustomed to that. So, uh, what, where did you where did you end up? Uh, were you still when you left? 
the uh, Navy, did you go back to Baltimore? I went back to Baltimore around my home and, and picked up. I was lucky enough to be at that time frame. You were at, your job was held open for you, that you could go back and get, get your old job back that you were, had before you left and went into the military. Okay. Uh, today, just being 2018, you're not lucky enough to do that. No. So what, what kind of line of work did you, did you use your military training to go, your, your job after you? I went back to my original job of being in, um, um, dealing with a shoplifting and store detective. Okay. Then I used my military VA benefits to go to school. Oh, you like I went into, I went into. GI Bill? Uh, your GI Bill? You used the GI Bill, right. Okay. Uh, used that for. I, plus, I, I used it for also purchasing a home. Okay. That was helpful with that. I can honestly say those were helpful things. I went into uh, design drafting, architectural design and mechanical drafting, and I wound up doing good in the school for that. I wound up becoming an instructor. I oh. taught for four years in the, in the drafting school. I wound up in engineering of other companies that led to more and, and better things. Okay. Do you, uh, so how did you end up in, in uh, Kentucky? Well, do, as I said, during the, my stay on board ship, and we were in, in Port Smith, uh, not Port Smith, but Virginia Beach in Norfolk, Virginia, my fellow on board ship uh, named Milton Johnson, he took me home for a weekend in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Oh, really? And I said, sure. So. So this is the first time you've been. This is the first time I've been to Kentucky. You, so you were uh, uh, in Maryland. So we would call you a Yankee. You come. Yeah, you can call. <laughs> yes, yes, and I, you can. Yeah. I still get that. Yeah. From my wonderful brother. Yes. Yeah. So you were. You were not only. Uh, you were going from the north to you. There was a different culture, right? Was it different? Oh, culture? it's a different. Yes, it's a much calmer place than being in a big city. It's rushing here and rushing there. So what did you? So what did you think about Bowling Green? It was quiet. It was a nice place to be. It was different. I never saw it's a lot, it was tobacco. A lot, it was a lot smaller in 1975 or 60. Uh, in 73, this was when I first, you know, my first year here, yes. A lot smaller. A lot smaller. Uh, the main, this, this building wasn't oh, even no, here. No. The, the furthest, uh, the buildings coming out on 231 was the Exxon gas station. and. Um, Jimmy D's is now was I don't know about history, but was Gospel Road was it even? It was, it was two lanes, one each direction. Okay. Okay, and uh, the like I said, the, the Holiday Inn was over there. The Exxon gas station was the furthest gas station out. Then they had Jimmy Deemers. I'm sorry, out it was the next grocery store out the road. The rest of it was all woods. So yeah, what did you think of it? Did you like it or dislike it? Oh, I liked it because it was quiet. Yeah. It was definitely quiet. And to, to met my my wife, we I was on a, I, I, my, my previous girlfriend dumped me before I even got home. Uh -huh. And this was kind of a rebound. And we actually went bowling to where the uh, Graves Clinic is at now. That used to be the bowling alley and that's where we actually met. We had so one while we went bowling. You met your friend's sister. Yes. So you just saw, oh, there's his sister. She's single and and she she was about the same age we we were. And I thought she'd be a nice person to grow, to love and to grow with. And, and my brother-in-law and I thought, even driving back from this time, I I knew her. I saw met her in April, and it wasn't until I. It, she'll probably get me on this, but sometime in May when I came back. I asked her to marry me that same year, uh, in 74, and we got married in September of 74. So you got engaged like a month, right? Yes. Now, I made a decision of that yeah. this was the girl for me, and it, it seems to work better when you don't know the person and you have them, both have a, an agenda. You're both 25, you want to get married, hey. Just go forward. That worked out pretty well. It has. It has. It has. I know other cultures do it that way when they when they match you up with people. Yeah. And it just seems to work that way. So so 
you, you uh, evidently you're here and you're not Baltimore, so you like Kentucky? I like Kentucky, yeah. I have, I have one thing in Baltimore, I have a background. My brother and his family is there. My mom and dad are both gone at this time, bless their souls. Not at this time, but they're both gone. And uh, my wife and I are here, living here. We've been here since about four years now. And okay. so this you, is our life. Okay. Uh, in, in closing, is there anything you'd like to talk about about what when you see people about the uh, when you, people talk about like the military or war on television or sometimes uh, how has it affected your service and like sometimes I always like to ask the people when you when you see the flag what does it mean what is when you do you what do you feel when you when you come in this building and you see the flag and well especially being from Fort McHenry where all the Star Spangled Banner started back in 1812. Yes, the flag means is important to me. Um, even just a couple of weeks ago, we had a uh, we lost a family member, and he had been in Vietnam. And the flag was on his casket, wasn't it? And it, it was it was it, it was folded in his casket, and I saluted him and his. It just, just it was just the thing to do. And and that yeah, we had being here. And meeting gentlemen that are in the were in the navy, I, the, the gas pump talking back and forth. Yeah, I've service here, and we were all talking about this Vietnam. That when we came back, some of us were spat upon. It wasn't a lovely thing to be a part of, part of, and the fellows were coming that they don't have feelings. Right? Well, you don't. There was a Marine at one of these stations. I was talking to a gentleman, we were about the same age, and a younger Marine from, I guess, the Desert Storm time frame. We were talking, you know, that, yeah, well, we weren't in Vietnam. And the young Marine came up and said to us, look, you're in the military, you were assigned to do a particular job wherever it took you, that you did your part. And that was the important part, whether you were in harm's way or not, we all have served in our, for our country. Yeah. And that's the only way you can look at it and to be proud yeah. of it. I think you, you've, you've, you've uh, uh, summed it up very well because a lot of times I talk to people and say, well, I didn't do anything. I wasn't in combat or I wasn't this. And I, it's, it's like my, my father told me, he told other veterans, he said, when you join the military, you sign a blank check, check up until your life. Yes. And so, uh, everybody has a story to tell, and if you and it's a little bit different. Little Everybody's a little bit different. And when you watch things on TV about Vietnam, the more information you see about that, the angrier I get because it should never happen. And what people do to people is really God must be rolling. Rolling around and saying that because no one person did this, no person's done that. I don't know how God is God. Be truthful. Yeah. He didn't create us to do this, but we're people. Yeah. Is that, uh, was it in, in, in closing? Is there anything you like to uh, talk about or? Well, I, I haven't talked about the ports of call that we were in. Okay. The, 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 this we, I was able to see Spain, parts of Spain. Uh, Barcelona, Spain, Malaga, Spain, which was one of my one of my favorite spots. Uh, Greece, Athens, Greece, Italy. Those were you made when you went on board, went to shore, and you went into bars and stuff. When you or food, get food, you met different people and you made friends. To this day, I still have some friends that I would like to have seen. Of course, that's 45 years ago. Uh, things are different, but. To see what they're doing these days, some people from like Switzerland, um, a lot of cultures, a lot, a lot of different cultures. You would, you would never say that if you were uh, in Baltimore, would you? Well, Baltimore is a sea town too. Oh, that's Roof, right. right. Baltimore right. is a sea town, but yeah, but but to be able to 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 go and see the world, to get a chance, yeah, do it. Yeah. Well, I'll. Uh, I'll Really been looking forward to this, and I, I'm, I'm uh, very thankful for your service, and I appreciate talking to you. And I was really excited when I saw your hat. That you know, 
I wear this more and more, and I'm more proud to wear it. Uh, I think I, I mentioned the other day I was down at one of the Kentucky Fried Chicken places down here, and I had this, and a young man gave me my order, and he said, oh, and thank you for your service. And he stuck his hand out, and he shook my hand, and he shook it in such a way that he actually had some grip to it, and I felt actually felt the sincerity of someone saying thank you for your service. He wasn't just going through the motions. No, he was not going through the motions. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's especially of, of people like yourself and the people I've interviewed and like my father's generation, you're in my father's generation, uh, that they didn't get anything when they came back. And so grief. Uh, yeah, so now it's 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 good that maybe you have some people that appreciate what you know. Yeah, and I'm accepting it. It's hard to accept, but you accept it more and more because yeah. you're finally hearing it more and more. Yeah. And I, Earl, I'd like to thank you very much for well, this opportunity. Well, yeah. uh, I've, I've, I've never, I've been dying, or so to speak, to, sh to play that little recording yeah. for us. And uh, as we're closing, could we just take and play it a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, let me see if I get this thing on here. And, uh, okay. It, it, Messed it up again. Did I? Did I? Did I? No, there you go. Okay. John F. Kennedy, return it. That, that was appropriate with that John F. Kennedy returning. That that brings history back for me every time I see stuff like that. Yeah. Um, okay. That was the era of growing up that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, it's it's a, a privilege, and I've been looking forward to this, and. Uh, well, I thank you. I'm yeah. glad we ran into each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I believe it was uh, kind of a divine thing for us to, to meet like that. Okay. And so, uh, if there's anything you ever need, just let me know and I'll, I'll help you out. And, and if you need to hear anything, if I can be of any assistance to anybody, too. Okay, I appreciate okay. it. Okay, you got pe people are still suffering from this. I ran into some of the friends, some people like standing in lines here. Oh, yeah, I was over on a, on a, the peak, on a, patrol boat in Vietnam and I just uh, well because I wanted to hear more person never said that anymore and I just thought okay I can only imagine what you went through and you're standing here today yeah, yeah. I appreciate it thank okay. you okay I uh, thank you thank you appreciate sir it. Thank, thank you, you.